morning. I'm running a little late, but go ahead and grab your stuff uh, for your craft of the month and we'll get started in a minute. You're fine, you can do what you need to. Um, you need to pull the truck in in a minute? Oh, okay. Alright guys, I think I am ready. Um, just took me a minute, a little slow this morning. Um, yeah, 10.15 instead of 10. Whoops. Um, anyways, grab out all your stuff for your bloom or your planted craft kit of the month. And get all your little pieces here. And you got your paint pouches. I just got my paint bottles. Um, I'm in the workshop this morning instead of at home. So, um, we might have a couple employees come in or my husband who I was just talking to a minute ago because he works out of the same workshop too with his company. So there might be a little side conversations going on, but, uh, yeah, grab out all your stuff. We're going to get started with this first. We're going to paint this navy blue. So that's what we're going to start with. Um, the only thing you'll need today is if you've got some sort of cup, you can mix the white paint with water. We're going to, um, do a whitewash on the frame. So I have these little bitty cups that I use. Um, no, they're not for jello shots, ladies. Uh, they were for, I used to use them for a paint pouch as my craft kit of the month and then I upgraded, but so I've got some left. So I'm gonna use that to mix my white paint and water, but just any old cup you have laying around. And then something you can squeeze your paint out on. So if you got a paper plate, whatever, um, that's about all you'll need. All these little crinklies here. And we're gonna get started. Say hello if you join me. Um, I'm gonna get it pulled up on my laptop here too. In case I miss anything. Laptop here too. Ooh, let's not get surround sound though. Nobody needs that. Hi Jane. Or, I'm guessing, is that Keely? It's like Keely on Jane's account. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna start by painting the back. Grab out your foam wood-handled brush. Navy blue, so open your navy blue paint pouch. <laughs> and I'm just gonna squeeze, you know, squeezing your paint pouch straight onto your um, backer here for your sign because I mean there's no need to put it somewhere else all the paints go in here and we're gonna start spreading it out I love this navy blue this is Anita's acrylic craft paint that's mostly what I use because um, she's got a really great color selection. You get it at Hobby Lobby. Um, so I mostly use Anita's acrylic craft paint, but sometimes um, if there's sales on other brands or it's got a color that I really like that I can't find in Anita's, I will use other brands. Actually, my good friend mentioned to me the other day that I should include the paint colors that I've painted some things. So I'll start putting that, like for my crate sets, I'll start putting that on the website some people want it to look, you know, just the way I painted ours or Gloria painted ours, depending. Um, so I'll include paint colors on the crate set listings on the website. 
the other place that I include paint colors um, is if you look on the DIY info. Oh no! <laughs> Crash. All right, so my little ring light here did not want to stay standing up. Let's see if I can't weight it down a little bit. There we go. I got a little cutout Easter bunny. <laughs> Lean it up against it. You know, this is all kinds of jerry-rigged right now. All right. I think it might be time for a new ring light. It does not want to hold its spot. Hmm. What if we do this? Whoop, there we go. There's some material in our workshop. Let's see how that looks. Kind of sort of that might work. Sorry, y'all. I thought I had the ring light set up correctly, but it's definitely on its last leg. Um, literally. And it's only got three of them, so that's not good. We'll see if it doesn't fall on me again. I'd really appreciate that. But, anyways, the colors. Um, the colors that I use for your craft kit of the month are always written down at the very bottom of your um, of your DIY sheet. So like the last line I put on there is like colors used in this craft kit and I give you the brand and the color name. So if you open one of the pouches and are like, oh, I love this color, like I do about this navy blue, then you know what brand and what color in case you wanna add it to your collection. Um, you know, we're going to put the frame around this. So that's why I'm not bothering with going all the way to the edge. This is actually like the exact navy blue I wanted to paint my house. But instead, I'm taking it like it's a little too bold for my husband. So I'm taking it down a notch. And it's like blue gray instead of just blue. All right, it's gonna need a second coat because I really like this navy blue to be like nice and rich. Um, so set that to the side. You can leave this out. Uh, you don't need to rinse it out yet because we'll use it again quickly. So set this to the side. And we'll get started on our words. Let me grab a quick piece of sandpaper. I just had a rough edge there. We always try to make sure when we pack stuff in the craft kit of the month that, you know, if it has a little part that needed to be sanded, it's been done. So hopefully this doesn't happen to yours. But if it does, if you find a little rough edge, some of them are even like thin enough that you can kind of just brush it off with your finger like I did there. There we go. There's our planted. <clears throat> All right, let's, let's go ahead and do everything that's gonna be white um, because y'all know I tend to do like three coats of white or you could also go for a different look and just do one coat of white um, so the wood grain will really show through and it almost gives it that whitewashed look that we're like actually going to do on the frame. But I like the idea of the words being like a very solid white. So grab one of the sponges you got. And we're going to paint these words white. Whew, 
hope y'all are having a good Friday morning. Yes, you are that friend <laughs> who gave me the suggestion about the paint colors. Um, yeah, I hope y'all are having a good Friday morning. I'm thinking I need to work on a consistent time to do these lives. I keep changing different times. Sometimes in the morning, sometimes at night. We got a lot of stuff going on at our house right now. So like our nights are kind of full of doing stuff there because we're getting the house painted and we're also um, closing in a garage and adding on another garage. So just a lot of busyness at the house. I have to order a new liner for our pool. So I was working on that last night. Getting all the measurements correct. Because of course they don't have just a simple rectangular pool. It's got these like curved ends. I don't know. They call it Grecian. Came with the house. <laughs> our whole goal to make our home as comfortable and as cozy as possible so that we want to leave as little as possible. I don't know if anybody else has those same life goals, but that's our current one. We really like our house and being at home with our animals and just the nature we have around there. So. We're just trying to make it our little kind of vacation, even though we live there, right? So that like when you pull, for me, I pull up down the driveway and it's like, oh, I'm home. It's relaxing. It's not stressful. And that's what we're trying to do. I'm going to build one of those... Uh, porch swing beds. I don't know if anybody has one of those or has like a connection to somebody who builds them. I mean, of course we could build them, but I'm typically busy doing Julie's Woodcrafts kind of stuff. And my husband's busy building arcade machines for his business. So yes, we could, but I don't mind supporting somebody else who it's their, their business. If y'all know somebody who likes to build the porch swing beds. We just have like a simple porch swing now, but mm, if I got a napping style one, I would be in heaven. I mean, I nap on my porch swing anyways. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze. Doesn't stop me though. If you're ever doing a lot of these, I think I've mentioned this on another live. Um, but if it frustrates you to hold them like this, um, if you're ever doing a lot of small pieces, you get a piece of tape, like um, painter's tape or something like that, sticky side up, lay it down, and then fold the ends under so the ends stick to the table. And then you've got this piece of um, tape with the sticky side up, and then you just stick these on the tape, and then you can just dab on and paint them um, instead of having to hold them like I do. And when we're doing a lot of them, we will, um, if we have to hand paint them. Honestly, when we're doing a lot of these, like when we're making, you know, a whole bunch of them, we'll lay them out and spray paint them. So it's a different process if I'm trying to do 10 at a time, you know, instead of just one at a time. And the great thing about doing it this way is you can do it sitting at your kitchen table. Not like you have to, you know, go outside to spray paint and that sort of thing. Plus this is a little more fun. A little more fun than spray painting. Once y'all have painted yours, I'd love to know where you're going to use your signs. I you know I have a couple of friends who have bought the craft kit of the month and um, I know my friend Marianne, I think she was going to use it in her daughter's bedroom. Um, I thought it would be really great like if you have a home office, 
be in the home office, kitchen. I don't know. I'm interested where y'all are going to use the signs or if you're going to gift them to somebody. I mean, the craft kit of the month makes a great gift after you've painted it, right? So then you've done something, right? You've put your stamp on it. Um, so if you get something in the craft kit of the month that you love, but maybe it doesn't work in your house or you can think of a friend or family member that has like a great spot for it you could always gift it after you paint it and you'd be gifting something you painted for them which is awesome Here's my first color white on bloom and where you are. So I just got planted left. You know what? Another thing that I know some of my DIY divas that like doing um, for painting is they'll use paint pens. I, I use them too, but I only use them uh, when I put highlights on a piece, like around the edge and like like little lines and stuff around the edge. Um, but you could even use paint markers. Or paint pens. Um, Posca, P O S C A, makes a really good quality one. Some people really like the Sharpie ones too. Um, but you could, you know, do all of these with paint markers too if you prefer. Or if you buy any of our other kits, you know, that come with all the little wood pieces. I'm using the, I forgot to point it out, but maybe you noticed. I'm using the skinny end here because these are our skinny letters. Yeah, I've been wanting to do a sign, something with navy blue for a while. And when I was looking for ideas for this month's craft kit of the month, I saw the bloom where you're planted idea. And then the first, my first thought was I was going to do some sort of a sunflower on it. And I thought, well, that would go well with maybe blue. Um, but it just, the sunflowers were a little complicated on the painting and that sort of thing. And also I think, I mean, I love sunflowers, but I think of that as a little more like a fall kind of flower. Um, and I was going for something a little springier, although obviously the sign can be used any time of year. Um, so that's why I ended up on this design. All right, I'm going to leave this here because I'm going to use that again in a minute um, when we work on another coat. So now I'm going to do the green. Grab another one of your sponges. I'm going to work on the green that's going to go on this one and the stems of the flowers. I'm going to use the skinny end again because we've got real skinny stems here. And then I'm just going to try to be careful, you know, get some paint just right there on the end so that when I come up to here, that I'm just going to the top of the stem there. <laughs> I've done too much spray painting if I don't find it fun anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I've <laughs> done a lot of spray painting. It's an art form, spray painting. Yeah, I find this more fun because this is what I do less of. Typically, if there's any hand painting involved in any of the orders we have, you know, Gloria's doing the painting for those. 
so I don't do a lot of hand painting. Um, recently I did a sea turtle design for somebody and we spray painted it green, but then we wanted to go in and do um, some lighter green polka dots on the sea turtle and I did those and then did some highlights with paint markers and that was nice because I do miss out getting to do some of that stuff. All right, so there we go. I've just done the green right up to the flowers. I just love this green. This one is our lily pad from Anita's. I especially like it with a navy blue background. I think it's a good compliment. I was happy when we were able to use this green. Alright, I think I am done with the green for now. We will come back and take a look at it in a minute and see if we want a second coat on it. Now we can do the flowers. So grab one more of your sponges. Um, the flowers are one of two colors. We ran out of the, the color I really wanted to use was this Deco Art Gentle Heather. Um, but we ran out of that because uh, they clearanced it out. I guess they're not going to make it anymore. But I really like that because it was like a little lavender. But um, so some of y'all got Princess Pink by Anita's Acrylic Craft Paint. And some of y'all got Gentle Heather. Um, so there are two slightly different versions of the flower color. But you need barely any of this because you're just doing the little flowers with it. Uh, All right. This one, I know I'm going to do a couple coats because I really liked it when I painted it, like where it was. Uh, very solid. I mean, probably just two coats will do it, but I know I'm going to do more than one. Be careful to not put too much paint on your sponge, otherwise, it'll kind of fill in the little bitty holes that we've cut in the flower. If that happens, you can always grab something really small, like a pipe cleaner, if you have a tiny paintbrush, and kind of get that little paint bubble out of the middle. That's easy enough. Tiny little flowers there. I feel like I went a little too low, so I'm going to come back with the green and cover up some of that that I just did. There we go.
And of course, while touching up with the green, then I got green where the lavender pink is supposed to go. <laughs> so now I'm going to touch that back up. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and we're gonna get a second coat on the flowers in just a second. Let's go ahead and pull back out our backer and do another coat of the navy blue. I am sure it is ready for it. I mean, everything's mostly dry already. You could kind of do a second coat on anything right now. All right, so squeeze yourself out some more of that navy blue on the backer. We've already got our foam brush ready to go. And pretty much all of these acrylic craft paints are gonna have a fairly matte finish, like kind of flat. Um, if you prefer a glossier look, when you're all done with your sign, you've got it all put together, you can always come back with a clear, um, a gloss clear spray and just do a light spray over that and it'll give it a nice sheen if you're looking for like a gloss sort of finish. But otherwise, there's no reason that you need to put a clear coat on this sign. I mean, unless you're going to be putting it out on a porch or something where it's going to get some weather. Otherwise, you don't need to. Um, just your preference if you want to, like, change the finish up a little bit to make it glossier. Or even a satin. They have a satin clear coat, too. All right. I think I am done with my second coat on the navy blue. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna use this brush. I mean, I've got an extra. You might have extras too, especially if you've done the craft kit of the month with me for a few months. You should, have, you should have some of these. But if you don't have another one, go ahead and wash this out. We're gonna use this to whitewash um, the frame when we do that. So wash it out, squeeze it out, like to get most of the water out. You don't want a ton of water in it. Um, but it's okay if it's still a little damp because we're gonna be using it for whitewashing. So um, go ahead and rinse that out if you don't have another one to use. Otherwise, just stick it in a cup of water. You can rinse it out later. All right, since I might end up with three coats, on my white words. I'm gonna go ahead and do them next. We'll see how I feel after my second coat. Later today, I'm going to post a little poll in the group um, with opinions about the next craft kit of the month. So, I call it my May craft kit of the month, even though, like, it goes, you know, for sale or whatever at the end of April. It ships out in the first week of May, so um, it's my May craft kit of the month. I am totally ready for a summer door hanger. I am okay with that. 
Like you can make it in May and then put it up after or for Memorial Day or after Memorial Day, um, up to you. But I know some people maybe aren't quite ready for that yet. So I was gonna offer two options in my poll and see what your opinion is. See if you guys agree with me that it's time, let's do a summer door hanger or do we wanna do um, like a generic home sweet home sort of door hanger? There we go. So I'll just post that as a poll um, or you can respond on the video too here. But I'm totally ready for it. Oh my goodness, I saw the best door hanger idea the other night. Um, it won't be our craft kit of the month because I know it's not everybody's style, but I'm definitely going to offer it for sale. Um, I just want to make it. It uh, says beach, please. And then it's got like Adirondack chairs. Kind of like um, I did one last year and I'll have that for sale again too is the Hello Summer um, but it has the different colored popsicles and the summer letters on the popsicles well this hat says beach please and then um, four different colored Adirondack chairs is really cute so I think I might have to design myself something like that And I know this summer for one of the craft kit of the months, I want to do a patriotic one for sure. Um, I did one last year. It was like the first time I had done this one and it was really popular and I really love it. It's one of my favorite door hangers I've made. It says let freedom ring, it's in this, but it's in this really pretty font and um, it's got stars all around. Like it comes with stars that you can glitter or paint however you want. I might let that be one of our, like our July craft kit of the month. Because you could hang it up, you know, for, I always think there are a lot of times, like you can do a lot of patriotic decor throughout the summer because you've got Memorial Day and July 4th and Labor Day. And so if you like patriotic decor, like you really can do it for the summer. Um, I've always kind of associated patriotic decor with the summer. So I definitely want to do a cute patriotic door hanger. bloom and planted. Now for the tiny letters. As usual, when y'all are done with yours, make sure you post a picture. You can either post it in the group or you can post it on Instagram and just tag Julie's Woodcrafts. I love to see pictures from y'all.
I've had a bunch of people ask since I've started selling the square framed initials. I think y'all have seen those. I post pictures. They got a black frame and we do a white backer with your letter on it. And I always put a greenery bow on it. Um, and I've had quite a few people like ask for um, like directions or whatever suggestions on how to make the greenery bows. So I think I will be doing that in a video next week or this weekend. It's really not bad because I was at first like intimidated seeing like greenery bows. I'm like, how do I do that? I, know, you know, where to start. So, and every door hanger artist is different on how they make them. Some use a lot of staples and glue to attach them. I have always liked making my bows detachable. You should want to change it out, especially if you hang something outside. I mean, the, the bow never lasts as long as the door hanger. It just it doesn't, even when I get wired ribbon, I feel like it just doesn't stand up to the elements as much. So I'd like for it all to be interchangeable if needed. So I don't hot glue or staple any of my bows on. So I'll do a little video next week about how I do my greenery bows. And as per my usual style, I like to keep it simple. You can always add more pieces of greenery than I do or mix it up if you like the idea of like having a variety. I'm gonna hold off on that because it's still got some damp spots. I'm going to come back and do my third coat on those in just a second. Looking at this one, I don't want to do another coat. I mean, you can see the see the wood grain through it a little bit, but I'm, I'm cool with that. I like that. So for this one, I am done. Um, I'm just going to do a second coat on the lavendery pink here for my flowers. Careful not to get it on the green stem part again. Alright, shows I have coming up for those of y'all who can make it to shows. I was in Perry, Georgia last weekend. Uh, that was my first time at the Dogwood Festival. And it was awesome. Perry, Georgia is a great little town. It reminded me of Cartersville, where I live in some ways. Do you need better cell phone <laughs> Yeah, my husband just said they do need better cell phone service. T-Mobile has not let me down. It has always worked. But in that little, like, one block radius of the downtown where our booths were, I could not yet get enough cell service to take cards. So the whole weekend, I could not take a single card. Well, I was able to take, like, four cards in the morning on Saturday. But then it wouldn't work anymore, which is weird. Why was it able to work then? And, um... Anyways, so that was a problem. Yeah, so I was at Perry, Georgia last weekend. That was great. I met quite a few new people that joined our DIY Divas group. So I am happy to have new people joining our group. Um, but then two weeks from this weekend. Anyways, so that was a There we go. Two weeks from this weekend, I will be at um, Rose Lawn in... Cartersville, so it's at like the Rose Lawn Museum in Cartersville, and then is it two weeks after that? I need to pull up dates. Um, I'll be at the Geranium Festival, which is just a one day. It's a Saturday in downtown McDonough, south of Atlanta. It's an awesome show, though. Like there's always tons of people, great vendors, um, and it's usually always like fabulous weather because it's towards the end of May. 
We're not really getting a bunch of that spring rain anymore. It's not quite crazy hot yet. I, of course, have probably totally jinxed it. Now it will rain and be 100 degrees. So, my apologies. All right, let's see. I will get some exact dates. All right, we've got the Rose Lawn Festival in Cartersville. That one is May 7th. So that's two weeks from this weekend. Um, is that right? Three weeks. May 7th is Rose Lawn. Um, and then the geranium is May 21st. Uh, and actually Rose Lawn Saturday and Sunday. So it's May 7th and 8th. Then geranium's May 21st. And then I am applying to hopefully go to another show that would be new for me, but it's kind of close to home over in Cave Spring, Georgia. Cave Spring, Georgia is like on the other side of Rome towards the Alabama border. Um, great little town. Um, so that's June 11th and 12th, I think. Excuse me. That's, um, I mean, I haven't been accepted yet. It's a new one for me, so... We have to wait for the acceptance, but hopefully I can do that one. I don't normally do stuff in June, but I did less spring shows this year than I normally do. Kind of spacing them out a little bit more just to give me a little time off in between. Plus all the home projects we're working on this spring. I didn't want to overload myself. So that's why I chose to apply to the... Um, one in Cave Spring in June because I've heard good things about it from other crafter and vendor friends. And then I won't have another show until September. Uh, maybe the end of August if I get into a Vintage Market Days event that I've applied for. Those can be kind of tough to get into. Painting is done. Yep, you got everything? I'm good. If you like to reuse these, you can rinse them out. But otherwise, you are done with those. I'm going to go put this in some water real quick so it doesn't. Time for our new technique of the month, which is whitewashing. Oh, I somehow left the U out over there. 
and it did not get more coats of paint. Let me touch it up real quick. I missed it. There we go. Okay, so for the white washing, all it is is adding a little water to your paint. Uh, it gets a you know fancy name, but you're just adding a little water to your paint so your paint's not going on as thick. So you'll want to get a little cup. It can be bigger than mine, but these are just what I have in the workshop. Squeeze out some of the paint from your white pouch. Yes, Camp Julie. Uh, that's the Cave Springs Art Festival. Uh, Camp Julie is my best friend's daughter comes and spends a week with me. Um, so she's going to help out at that show. She's a little blooming, crafting entrepreneur herself. All right, so I put some white paint in here. You don't need much because you're going to add some water to it. I will try to show you the consistency. All right, so I'm always nervous about like over watering it. So I like to put just a little bit in to begin with. You're going to be in about a half and half. And you can always add more white paint, you know, if you put a little too much water. You got something to stir it up here. But uh, not half and half, sorry. You're looking for about two-thirds paint to one-third water, right? So two parts water, two parts paint to one part water. Um, so you want it to have a little more paint than water. And you're looking for it to be pretty runny. Obviously not quite as runny as like a drink. But like partly melted milkshake consistency. I don't know if that helps at all. That probably doesn't help at all. I, what I have right now is decent, but I still feel like it's a little bit thick. So I'm going to add another drop or two. Because what I'm really going for is almost like a, it's going to look like a white stain on the frame. That's really what white washing or, and I mean, you can use any paint color and it just kind of looks like a stain on the paint. All right. So I've got like a nice runny consistency here. I'm going to pour it and see if that helps you. Let's see in what my consistency looks like. Oh, I got the wire cutters right here. Oh, whoops, I stole their tools. Here you go, hon. I don't need those. Oh, you don't want these? Those are the ones. Those aren't wire cutters. Well, they got wire cutters on them. You need the bigger ones? Okay, sorry. Um... Gloria says she has some wire cutters over there too. Does she know what wire cutters are? Keith, these are wire cutters. Those are needle nose pliers. They're needle nose pliers with a wire cutter on them. Are those the ones you needed? Yes. Okay. And these are yours because. Oh, those are mine. Out. Yes. For the uh, people at home, that is a wire cutter. This is this, a dual purpose wire this, cutter. This is a needle, needle nose, nose wire, wire. That can cut, but it's not a wire cutter. Whatever. It does the job of a wire cutter, so we can call it a wire cutter. Me. Sorry you had to witness that. Okay, here we go. Let's try again. So you can kind of get a sense of like the consistency here. Right? So definitely runnier than paint. Um, now, I just used the end of the paintbrush to mix it. Now you're using the foam brush that you rinse the navy blue out of, or if you already have extras of these. Heather, stop sending me jokes and Facebook Messenger. Uh, okay, so... 
using your foam brush, you are going to wipe it on and spread it out. And you'll see, because it's got a liquidy consistency, you need to spread it out well, and you'll come back and go over it again. This is actually a little bit thicker than the one I did, like that was the photos for this, because that one was really light. I had more water, so the frame was like really lightly whitewashed. But also, it'll dry lighter. So it might look like it's a, you know, a heavier white now, but then it'll dry a little bit lighter. So if you're watching this and you want even lighter than this, add a little more water. You can always come back and go over it if you think it's too light. I'm just going to even it out. So go back over it in spots that are a little bit lighter, spots where I touched it, my little fingerprint. You also can come back and wipe it off um, with like a lint free rag, like microfiber sort of thing. But I put mine on thin enough, I don't think we really need to come and wipe it off. And now it's all smoothed out so I don't have any spots that look lighter than the other spots. But that's whitewashing. I mean, traditionally, you'd be doing it on a bigger piece, but you'd put like a, it'd be a little more watered down, you'd put a lot on and then you'd wipe it off. Um, but for our purposes, this is a, this works well for us. Um, not watering it down quite as much and just doing like one coat and not needing to wipe it off. But so you can see it's got, you can obviously still see the grain through it. So it looks like I've essentially stained the frame with a white stain. Now we're ready to glue everything together. Yay! This is always the best part because you get to see everything come together. All right, I'm going to glue the frame on last just so it doesn't get in the way. Although it's practically dry already, that whitewashing is very quick to dry. All right, so you should be able to still see the outlines of the words here. I don't know if it shows up on the you've got your own so you can see in the light you should be able to see the outline of the bloom where you are planted helps you glue everything on straight so i'm going to start with bloom and i'm going to use the last little um, sponge we have like i'm just putting glue on my table because it's a plastic table and using the skinny end, I am putting a thin layer of glue all around the back. I do not want any big globs because otherwise it's going to squish through. If it does squish through, you can always grab, like I use pipe cleaners because we have tons of those around the workshop, and you can kind of wipe off the extra little glue that pushes out around the edge. All right, so I'm going to line it up here with my outline. There we go. Looks good. 
give it a little push so it sticks. And of course I had paint on my finger, which I then proceeded to get on here. <laughs> Before you glue, you should probably get all the wet paint off your hands. So, you know, do what I did there. I'm going to touch that up in a minute. In a minute. Let me focus. I'm going to do the words first. Hopefully, y'all love this navy blue as much as I do. Like, now that it's dry, you get to see it. It's such a rich color. I just love it. Alright, let's stick this one on. There we go, I got it lined up with my laser etched outlines, give it a little push, nice and stuck down. Alright, we're going to move on to the little letters. I will tell you that the E's are different sizes and the R's are different sizes. So when you pick up your letters to put on, compare it with the outline to make sure you've picked up the right one. So I'll show you when we get to the E's and the R's. I don't know how that happened. I mean, it's the exact same font, obviously, but I must have resized them separately, like the smallest amount. And we realized that when we were like packing things up, we're like, oh, these aren't quite the same. So we had to make sure we gave all the right sized E's and R's. Okay, so if you look at your E's, not a big difference, but two of them are taller than the other ones. So those two are the taller ones are for the wear, and the little bit shorter one is for the R, A R E. You would also tell if you tried to put the wrong E, it's not going to line up there. All right, your R's also are minimally different. One is a tiny bit smaller. The smaller one is for the A-R-E. The little bit bigger one is for the wear R. But again, you're just matching outlines, so you would have realized that. These are really small letters, so just make sure you're, you really are just putting a little thin layer of glue on the back. It does not take much to hold them on. Give them a good push down. Because with these tiny letters, it really is easy to put a little too much on. And then it squishes out around the edges. And then we 
we've got our minimally smaller R and E here. for planted. Shop with the leaves and flowers. All right, sufficiently covered. There we go, all lined up. Give it a push. Okay, so your flowers on at the bottom of the stem have just a little bit of a curve. That fits right on top of the D. So it's going to look like they are growing out of the top of the D. Keep in mind, you just still have to put the frame on. So you gotta get the angle right on the flowers. Otherwise they might be, whoops, frame doesn't fit that way. Um, otherwise they might be in the way of the frame. So just double check that you've got that angle right so that they don't get in the way of the frame. Just getting that curve to fit right on top of the D. So it looks like the flowers are growing out of the top of the D there. And then this one just kind of fits in right there. You can always go ahead and lay this on it. If you want to do that to kind of get a sense of like where exactly you want to put it. All right, so I'm going to come in a little bit more with the bottom, so I've got a little more space over there, kind of equal to the space I have with the flower. All right, so I'm going to leave the frame sitting here. That'll help me with lining this up, because I didn't put the outline for the flowers. It's the big shop fan kicking on. Um, or the leaves. Because I thought they just kind of kind of fit in there and didn't necessarily need an outline like the words do. Because if the words aren't straight, people don't notice that. this way a little bit and drop it right there. You can kind of play around with yours, right? Figure out exactly where you want yours to go. That's where I wanted to put mine. And then the last thing is to put the frame on. Now my frame looks like it's a little bowed in the middle. I mean, that's just going to happen for these thinner frames. Um, so you'll want to have something to put on it, something heavy to put on it to weigh it down. If it's not 100% dry yet, wait, then put the glue on so that then you can put something on it to weigh it down. Or if you've got clamps too, you could do that, you could clamp it down. 
mine is definitely dry enough, I'm pretty sure. Still feels damp from the water, but then like, there's no color coming off of it. So, And you can see too, now that it's dried, it is lighter. Um, when you first put that whitewash paint on, you're like, oh, this is whiter than I was expecting. But if you've still got glue in your pouch, you can just squeeze out a thin line. Um, but yeah, that white washing. Oh, and so your sign is actually 16 inches by 15 and a half. So you have to put the frame on the correct way. Like it won't, it won't fit correctly the other way. So make sure you figured out which side is the 16 inch side, which side is 15 and a half. Otherwise, your frame's not going to fit your air quotes square. It's not actually a square. All right. And then I'm just going to get some heavy things to set right here on the middle. Um, also, when you give it a good push, too, uh, it helps the glue stick. Actually, that's holding it down pretty well. But just to be safe, I've got this bottle of paint here. That one's not heavy. That one's heavy. I'm going to put some on the top, too. Anyways, soup cans, paint, books, clamps, whatever you got. This one feels pretty good. So any parts that aren't like 100% in contact with the backer, just set something heavy on. But seriously, y'all, finished product. Is this not adorable? I am so happy with how this turned out. I love these colors. This navy blue is like, I'm all about the navy blue right now. Loving it. I hope you guys love it too. That is it. Um, your kit included a sawtooth hanger. So if you wanted to hang yours on um, on the wall with a sawtooth hanger, you've got that. Um, the other thing you could hang it with, well, let's see. Uh, um, the other thing you can hang it with is um, just double-sided mounting tape. So just putting a few strips of double-sided mounting tape on the back stick it on the wall, just lean it on a shelf, you know, so I, so I don't put the sawtooth hanger on it because it's up to you if you want to do that. If you do put the sawtooth hanger on, make sure you put it like directly on the back of where the frame is up here and like this top inch, um, inch and a half really, because the screws are long enough that they would go through this. So you would see them, if you put it lower, you would see them come through. And you don't want to do that. So you put it where the frame is so it's got twice as much material to go through. Um, so make sure if you do put the sawtooth hanger on that you're putting it on the back side of this where the frame is. But other than that, you put the sawtooth hanger on, you just hang it with double-sided mounting tape. That's my favorite thing to hang stuff with. Or Velcro strips. Um, Heather, I know you use Velcro strips for everything, so you could always do that too. Um, I think that's it. Spray it with a clear coat if you want it to be glossy. I like the matte finish, so I am cool with it. Um, yeah, check back in the DIY Divas group this afternoon. I'm doing a poll um, on what we want for our next craft kit of the month. I'll post some ideas. They're not like going to be exact pictures of what it will be. But um, check there. I would love for you to vote. And I think that's it. I appreciate y'all joining me. And if you watch on a rewatch, because I know Friday morning is kind of a random time to be doing a live paint, please comment. Um, share a picture when you're done with yours too. I really want to see it. So thanks for hanging out with me on Friday morning. I am going to now go finish my most likely cold coffee. Cheers. Have a great weekend. Bye.